Hello friends. Today I am going to discuss the topic delays in VSDL. We are basically having three type of delays: delta delay, transport delay, and inertial delay. So I will be taking them one by one. The first one is delta delay. It is an infinitesimally small delay which allows for the ordering of events that occur at the same simulation time. It means it is not an actual delay and the actual simulation time does not advance. We have already discussed this type of delay when we are comparing the data flow style of modeling and uh, behavioral style of modeling. So I will not be taking it uh, too much and uh, these points are already written here for delta delay. That is it is only used for the ordering of events. The second type of delay is transport delay. It is a pure propagation delay. Like I want to give a delay of 5 nanosecond or 10 nanosecond to the circuit. That is, I want the output after a time period of 5 nanoseconds or 10 nanoseconds. So it is a pure propagation delay, and any changes on the input are transported to the output. The syntax is transport some variable after the time period. So I am taking an example here. Z is transport A after 5 nanoseconds. So I am having the input as A and the output as Z. This is the input waveform for A, and this is the output waveform. As you can see, the inputs are changing at four, six, nine, eleven, twelve, and so on. Similarly, the as the statement is transport A after five nanoseconds. So this is the statement for A or the waveform for A, and after five nanoseconds means after five means nine. 11 14 16 17 20 and so on the waveform is changing so this is the transport delay in this case the keyword transport should always be used to specify that it is a transport delay second it is a pure routing delay means i if i want to transmit something from one end to another end and i want to give certain amount of delay or i want my input to be reaching the circuit at a certain amount of delay so i can use this transport delay model in this case spikes would be propagated suppose any changes are occurring because of noise or any uh, symbol is changing from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 so in that case it won't be able to specify those spikes and those changes will would also be propagated with the help of transport delay the third one is inertial delay model this is the delay model which is found in switching circuits now the basic syntax for inertial delay model is signal object that is the output is reject pulse rejection limit inertial expression after initial inertial delay value here what is the pulse rejection limit it specifies the time period for which the input waveform should be stable and if the input waveform is stable for that time period after that it will be checking for the delay value and it will be adding that delay value or the time to the input to get the final output so as it is written here input value must be stable for a specified pulse rejection limit duration before the value is allowed to propagate to the output the value appears at the output after the specified inertial delay value and if the input is not stable for the specified limit no output change will occur so for this i have taken an example like z is reject 4 nanosecond inertial a after 10 nanosecond so i will have to see if the input waveform like for a inertial a a is the input variable first of all i will have to check that the waveform for a should be stable for 4 nanosecond if it is stable for 4 nanosecond then i will be adding a delay of 10 nanosecond in that input waveform so here is the waveform which i have taken from the book of uh, vsdl primer by j bhaskar uh, here you can see first of all the input is coming as 0 and its value is changing from 0 to 1 now the next change here the time gap is of 3 nanosecond so it is not stable then i will be checking it for 10 where the value is changing from 0 to 1 now here the total time period of the gap is 15 nanosecond which is greater than 4 nanosecond so if the time period is equal to 4 nanosecond or more than 4 nanosecond 
so in that case we will say that the input waveform is stable at this point now at this point of 10 nanosecond the input waveform is stable so i will be adding a delay of 10 nanosecond and my output waveform will be propagated after a time period of 20 nanoseconds now i will be checking for zeros like it was initially showing a transition from 0 to 1 now i will be checking from 1 to 0 here the time delay is 3 nanosecond again it is less than the pulse rejection limit now here it is 30 nanosecond and 45 nanosecond so again i am getting a delay of uh, sorry the time gap is 15 nanosecond which is more than the pulse rejection limit so as you can see in the output waveform after a delay of 10 nanosecond from this time 30 nanosecond i will be getting a change in the value of output from 1 to 0 and again we will be checking it for the next time intervals which are given and based on that we will be getting the output waveform the input is stable here like suppose the input was taking the value as 0 up to 10 but because of some noise or because of some error the value is changing from 0 to 1 in between which is known as a spike so if this spike is available so this spike will be removed with the help of this pulse rejection limit so here one more thing this pulse rejection limit the st uh, starting point or part of the syntax that is reject pulse rejection limit is optional if it is not written in that case the value of inertial delay value like in this example suppose i am not writing reject 4 nanosecond so in that case the delay will be uh, sorry the pulse rejection limit will be same as inertial delay value of 10 nanosecond another thing is inertial is also optional if i am not writing inertial in even in that case and i am simply writing a after 10 nanosecond so it will be taking care of inertial delay so i have written it like this z is a after 10 nanosecond so i have not specified any pulse rejection limit and i have not written the keyword inertial even after that it will be taking the inertial delay model while in transport delay model i will have to use the keyword transport so it is these are the examples another thing is pulse rejection limit cannot be negative or it cannot be greater than the value of inertial delay value so this is all about the type of delays thank you